they don't know what grass is yet, I don't think. No. Literally retired them to a pasture and I'm trying to get them back into a barn. So we're gonna go to the vet on a Saturday morning. She is not. Good morning, it's Saturday and it is foggy. This is the first real foggy morning we've had probably all summer. It is thick. Soupy. I'm gonna bombard you guys with more uh, golden girl material here. I'd like to see how they're doing this morning. I don't see them outside. Of course I can't see anything. Move too far, have ya? Hi, Ruby. Hi, Marge. How was your first night? Well, it looks like we've uh, survived night one. I remember when I was in the house last night at like 10 o'clock that I have a light in the barn, like a night, like it comes on at night, and I forgot to plug it in. So I'll do that tonight. I did throw out hay last night. It still looks like there's a little there. Are you hungry? There's quite a bit of grass, but they don't know what grass is yet, I don't think. Hi. How are you doing, Big Mama? A little stiff this morning. Here's my girls. Better go see how the rest of the flock's doing. One more you to check on this morning before we start chores. And that's my mastitis you. She's not laying in the corner of death. That's always a good sign. Where is she though? Oh, my lambs are getting big. There she is. So this is the second, like third day so I treated her with Medicam two days ago, a uh, painkiller. Uh, it is supposed to last two days, so I think I might give her another dose today of that and get her on her feet, get her drinking, get her eating hopefully in the next day or so. And then uh, we'll see from there, really. That antibiotic usually is the thing that does the trick. That's all we can do to make her feel better. Hi, kids. So I was going to move these bottle lambs this morning over to the barn across the road, but I remember Jack needs our truck today to move, help move a friend to school. So I think what I'm going to do is actually clean out their pen. It's getting really deep. It's not going to be perfectly clean, it's just going to be less full. <laughs> and then I'll rebed them up and then they'll be good until at least till Carissa gets back. And then me and her can work at that maybe on Wednesday morning or even maybe Thursday. I think I'll do that right now. Uh, this morning has gone from bad to worse. I went to move my milk machine and I tipped the entire outhouse over. Long story, I'll tell you about it later because now we have something even worse. I have a puppy who will not move, will not walk just super depressed. She's nursing her back left leg, so I don't know if it's that, but I also found a couple piles of vomit just outside the door, the main door here. And uh, so now I'm wondering if she got into something, but uh, she is not a happy dog. So we're gonna go to the vet on a Saturday morning. The close location is not open for this emergency, so I have to take her to Stratford, which is about a 40, 45 minute drive. So we better get on the road. I'll uh, keep you guys posted. We are just back home. Dr. Mac couldn't quite figure out what was going on with her. We wonder if he wonders if she's hurt her back, um, but all her reflexes are good. Her legs are good. Her temperature was fine. What else did we check? Yeah, so we aren't really sure. He just said uh, if she, he gave her a painkiller, so that should help. And then by Monday, if she hasn't turned around, we're gonna have to run some blood work. So hopefully we'll be feeling better by then.
He's just concerned she's so stiff at her back end, like me. That's what I was concerned about, so. And she's the kind of dog that will not react. Like, she just would not react to anything. Hey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think the painkillers are kicking in. just in the middle of feeding, and look who came up to eat. She was eating a second ago. That's some good news. She was eating, now she's gonna, she's laying down now just because I grabbed the camera. But she was, she came right up to the bunk and started eating when I was feeding. Oh, she's trying so hard. Oh, she's peeing, that's good. All good things. Okay, I gotta keep going. It is so hot and so late. Why, hello! You got up! How are ya? How you doing? Can you walk to mom? Good girl. Oh, you're looking a little bit. Oh, good girl. Are you feeling better? Feeling a little better? Oh, it's good to see you up. It's good to see you up. Oh, nice teeth. You hot? Yeah. Did you have some water? Did ya? And some food? Or are you just loving the painkiller? Mm hmm? Can I see you walk? It's looking a little better. It's not very long, eh? Not very long. Come here. Look at you. Miraculous recovery. Hey. You've been running like crazy for the last 12 hours. What was your problem? What was your problem? Are you ready to do some sheep chores today? You played hooky yesterday. Morning guys, it's Sunday, and uh, yesterday was quite the day with that dog. I was very worried. Mark is convinced she was faking it. I'm like, there's no way she was faking that back end. Like, she could not move. We got back from the vet, and uh, she kinda just stuck to herself all day. I'll backtrack a little bit. We've had a few accidents in the house this week, uh, more than this week, for quite a while. There's a lot of pee stains everywhere, and I was getting really sick of every morning I had to clean up pee. Our dogs were always outside growing up, um, so it is the middle of summer, she can stay outside. Well. I think because Lucy got to stay inside and she had to go outside, I think she thinks we were mad at her. Which I was, but I didn't think she was smart enough to really know that. So Mark thinks she was protesting yesterday and that it was all just made up. Once we were both kind of doting on her all day and we let her back into the house. Well, all last night, I let her out like three or four times last night and she was running like full tilt, more, more Kinsey style. So I'm like, how can you be that stiff and running like a fool? And then this morning, I let her out at six, like 5.30 quarter to six, let her out to pee. And I always let her out and leave her out at that time because it's the morning, she can just hang outside. These dogs, I swear. Anyways, um, she pulled the same thing. She was hiding from me, she wouldn't come near me, she was like slithering, she'd go under the truck, she ran under the trailer. I'm like, what is going on? So I had to pick her up and carry her halfway to the barn and then finally, she started running around and she was fine. She was like, had to know that I was okay with her. I'm like, what are we doing? What does our relationship come to? So we got some psychological work to do, I guess. All right, let's do some chores, kids. You've had more attention in the last 24 hours than you've ever had. I guess mission accomplished. 
Good morning. It's Monday. It's raining. It's really hot, but I'm wearing a hoodie just because of my commute. Chris is still away today. I believe she's away tomorrow, but I can't remember. So I think today, after chores, I better do my Carissa cleaning. She always leaves this barn like immaculate. I, on the other hand, do not. <laughs> it's so messy. She would have a conniption, but yesterday got so hot. A storm ro rolled through here last night. We missed it and went just like a mile west of us and then around us. And I'm like, oh no, is this, what's, is this what's gonna happen for the rest of the summer again? So let's do some chores. And then um, I'd like to see how my ladies are doing in that pasture. I still don't think they've come inside. I've been trying to still coax them in with a little grain and a little hay. Kinsey's also doing very good. I am starting to wonder if indeed that was psychological. I wonder if she thought we were mad at her um, because she is fine. She's acting like, like she's acting like nothing was wrong. Let me know in the comments below if you guys know, do border collies do this? Uh, my Instagram community are saying, oh yeah, border collies are friggin' smart. And if they think you're mad at them, <laughs> they will, uh, they will do stuff like that. I've just never seen her do that. some grain. Not that you need it. Oh hi big mama. No. <laughs> no. Hello. Did you find the barn? Here I'll get a little grain. There you go. Would you like some hay? Don't need all that. That's for four. Not for one. I'm gonna put it here. Move you in a little bit more. Yeah. There you go, big mama. Oh, that Marge. Margie, sorry. So the video that I uploaded yesterday on this little plan of mine uh, went over really quite well. I wasn't really sure what to expect because I've got kind of two camps. I've got a camp that would be like, we want all your retired used to go here and I just I can't afford to farm if that was the case. These four have had a story I guess and uh, they've just gotten into my cold dark heart and um, made my life a little brighter. <laughs> we do have a little tiny pasture here that uh, we cut with a lawnmower so it's like well why do we do that when we have a few sheep we could just throw out here so um, so I wasn't sure how the video would go over. The other camp would be like uh, would be sheep farmers going like that's not really how our business should be run and they'd be they'd be right and I hope I've disclosed that fully and explained that and been transparent about that that this is like not the norm this isn't what's going to happen all the time um, but it's a little fun it is fun it's been nice for the for me this weekend just to come out here at night and uh, say hi to them and wander around the pasture a little bit so um, it's wet today so I'm not gonna be doing that probably till this afternoon but uh, yeah so it's been a fun little fun little journey I guess if you have other questions you can leave them in the comments below but basically this is like this is the exception to the business exception to my rules they're pets now they're just expensive pets it's like having a couple horses here not planning on riding them uh, but uh, just something for me to look at It is, I believe, Tuesday morning, and I believe this is my last 
morning on tap for chores for a bit. Carissa is home now, but I gave her the morning to sleep in because I think she's had quite the quite the weekend with her friends at a music festival. So she kind of saved up hours all summer to take like five days off here or six days. I can't remember how how many days it's been. This morning's actually going to be a bit of a rush because I want to get feeding done and chores done because uh, I want to get my market lambs weighed because they need to get shipped tomorrow. And um, and actually this afternoon I'm meeting a good friend. She's an artist and we're going to work on some merch. I really want to get some new ideas uh, for merch. That's why I've taken a long time coming out with stuff. I just, I didn't have the capacity this summer to even look at merch. Uh, all we've been working on is uh, some new wool projects for the fall and winter. I'm hoping that uh, we can come up with, with something for you guys. Uh, I've been getting a ton of emails and uh, I'm not ignoring the fact that I haven't done merch. I just, I really just have not been in the place to be able to even focus on that side of the business. Um, so I would like to get something kind of started and uh, going here, hopefully by September, uh, get some ideas on the road so we can come up with some like late fall, uh, winter stuff and then it'll be hopefully available for Christmas. That's kind of the goal, but we'll see. We are all set to go. Uh, I think this week is going to be my second last kind of ship week. So I'm going to actually put my weights down a little bit. I'm going to go 100 pounds and over. And then hopefully we'll have enough between two loads to get the rest uh, shipped over the next few weeks. Um, the markets have not been great. Uh, definitely last week's the first time I've seen it really quite uh, depressed, the market. So. We'll see what, I don't really go by price. It's not like I will wait and ship uh, based on what the price is doing. I ship based on weight. So these guys are at the age they need to go. They're at their weight they need to go. And I also need to get this barn kind of emptied out so I can wean hopefully next week. So that's, uh, that's kind of the plan.
Alrighty. That went really good. I lucked out because they've been through so many times that they weren't too, too bad to get through. Let's go over the uh, stats here while I got this plugged in. Okay, it's looking like we had 31 ready, which is good. That's probably, we're sitting probably around that um, for what's left, maybe a little more. I can't really tell when they're in the pen. Minimum weight was 100, like I said, and the max was 118 pounds for an average weight of 106.6, so close to 107. 52% were rams, 48% ewes. Um, usually when we're getting to the tail end of these groups, uh, that's when you'll start to really see the ewe lambs start to come up. They, they do take a little bit longer than the ram lambs. And the problem with ewe lambs, this is kind of also why I put my weights down a little bit, those ewe lambs, because they're a reproductive animal, they will start to put on too much fat. Um, and then that's too much trim for our processors, like the, the people on the other end. Uh, your grocers, they don't like all this trim that they're left with. And females, this is what I've been told earlier, females really do put on quite a bit of fat at, at the end in that like 100 pounds. And it takes them longer to get there. So it's actually cost me quite a bit of money just to put on trim, literally, for these poor grocers. So um, so that's also kind of why I start to drop the weight a bit. I'll catch those ewe lambs before, if I waited another week, then they'll be at like 105 or 107. And then, uh, and then again, too much trim. So that's kind of my reasoning for going down at this point as well. But yeah, they look good. Um, I'm gonna just clean up here and then go see my ladies outside. Hi, hey. sweetie. Good morning. Of course, I will put you a scratch. Of course, I'll put you a scratch. <laughs> They're getting a little braver, aren't they, Ruby? Yeah. Yeah. Hello, sweetie. You're my fearless leader? Yes, you are. There you go. Come on in. Because we're eating the hay, that's good. Get you some more. There's your hay. So do they need hay and grain? Absolutely not. Uh, however, uh, a lot of you actually have reminded me, and I should know this, that uh, even going from what they were on before to grass is still a feed change and you have to do it fairly gradually. So I am giving them hay because they're used to, well, they're used to wet her hay, but we're gonna feed them some dry hay and just a little bit of grain um, just to keep stuff as normal as usual. And then from there, hopefully they'll transition onto the grass. It's been too hot. I would imagine this week, now that's cooled off, they, they might figure it out. But I've been feeding them in the barn just so they know to come in here. They've been pretty leery, uh, but they're all in here now. And yes, it's ironic. I literally retired them to a pasture and I'm trying to get them back into a barn. I just want them to know that there's a safe place. I want them to know that they can get in to here if they have to. And it's some shade when it is hot. It is sunny. 